Hey folks, I went through the DC SFRA yesterday and today, and so I know a little bit about how the planning for that is done, and some friends asked me to share it, so I am. First, I think it's funny, I'm in a hotel room, and that is like what the pro pilots do, so, you know, here I am just recording from a hotel room because I'm a pilot, um, which I just think it's funny, I'm not a professional pilot, and while I'm at it, I'm not your CFI, I'm not a CFI, I'm just showing you the experience that I went through to do this. So let's look over here in ForeFlight. Uh, first of all, to give you some uh, an overview here, the big circle on the outside here is the SFRA Special Flight Rules Area, and the inner one is the Flight Restricted Zone. Uh, it's the CIFRA and the FREEZE, F-R-Z. Basically, you don't go inside the FREEZE, ever. You can go in the CIFRA, though. It just takes a little bit of planning in, uh, in advance to do it. So I'm sitting over here in Winchester, uh, KOKV, and earlier today I went out here to past Annapolis to Bay Bridge. And you can see it's just on the other side of the Sifra. So I could have gone all the way around, but what I had wanted to do was to go through it. So let's just build a route just like you normally would in ForeFlight. And once you get that set, all right, there's the direct route. Well. Uh, not going through the freeze, that's for sure. Also, not going to be going through some of this Bravo space. This is uh, a 1,500 foot ceiling. It's a busy area. I, I want to be on an outer ring before I do that. So I made this into a uh, into a round trip and, and went south to begin with and then north on, on the way back. If you look at, at the CIFRA here, there are these things called gates on each of these. So you can see here's the lucky gate. L-U-C-K-E. Uh, and then if we go down, you'll see there's the JSON gate uh, and so on. Those are just separated by uh, by radials uh, here. So um, I think those are from DC National Reagan uh, Airport. Uh, but those those radials are, you know, are all the way through there. Here's another one right there. And so when you're between those two lines, that's the fluky gate. Anything through here you're flying in fluky. It doesn't matter. Um, it's, there's not you know, a one mile section you can go through. You can go through the whole thing. So you just choose which gate to label it is that you're, that you're coming through as you make your route. All right, so having said that, uh, there are also some IFR style navigation points for those, which just make it, makes it a little bit easier to identify your route, although they're not perfectly on the route either. So I'll show that to you in a minute here. But first, let's make a basic route. So uh, just gonna rubber band this down. That's essentially what I'm trying to do is stay in this outer ring of this of the Bravo here. And there we go. There's a, you know, that's a little close. Let's, uh, let's put that up there. Um, all right, so here's our basic route. And as I said, we're going in through Fluky right here. And if you look on, it's a little hard to see because there's uh, there's a TFR here, uh, but if you look on, on the IFR chart, uh, there is the fluky gate. So we can, we can drag this on down and grab that. You can also type it in. And so what I did is I went down to the fluky gate and then I relived my GPS points through there. Um, it's really nice once you're on here because you can switch some of your GPS points to uh, to nav points, and it just makes it a little bit easier when they are reading your uh, 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 reading your your uh, route. So I'll show you how that comes into effect in a second here. Oh, that's a little close. Uh, that's okay. We're going to leave it for that. Uh, okay, and the final gate here is Paleo. And um, oh, it doesn't. It doesn't really label it very well when I go to the IFR chart. I'm not going to show you that. I told you it was paleo. There is a. You can see where we're going to Bay Bridge. There's a marker for paleo just up there, so we can click that. And now, if you look at our flight plan here, and let's go back to our sectional. If you look at our flight plan here, you can see we're going from OKV. Uh, we're using a GPS point going to Fluky. Then going in, we'll come over here to Judid and Jetta, and on out to Paleo. And that's our exit gate. So there's a, there's a basic route. I might do a little bit more fine tuning, but I'm trying to do this 
uh, kind of on the fly as we as we check, uh, chat here. So let's let's copy that over to our flights. Now there's a, a weird thing that I found in here, which is um, the route sometimes will disappear uh, when we are doing a CIFRA route. So once I remember how to do select all, there we go. I'm just going to copy the whole route. Now let's go up here and let's change to CIFRA. All right, uh, we're in CIFRA. Now our first point, this is, this is the key of CIFRA, right? They don't care about what airport you've left from, where you're going to. They care what gate you're going into the CIFRA and what gate you're coming out of the CIFRA. So you don't have departure and destination airports. You have uh, departure gates and destination gates. Uh, uh, was that fluky? I'll go down and double check. Uh, see, now as soon as I did that, my route disappeared. So we're gonna we're gonna bring the route back in a minute. Uh, so our destination, remember, is Paleo, and uh, you can just type that on in, and it goes really nice. All right. Um, once we're uh, down here to the route, uh, pasting my route back in. Now you don't need Fluky, and you don't need Paleo. Uh, it'll amend your route to remove those if you don't. Okay. Your altitude is very important. I turned on all. Um, uh, now, there we go. We want to do, actually, we do 2700 there. There isn't an all. All right. You know, we're doing weird altitudes because we're trying to stay underneath the Bravo by 300 feet, and, you know, it's legal because you're close enough to the ground. So there we go. So we've got our DC CIFRA there. We actually changed airplanes, which doesn't matter, but I'll put it back for the fun of it. And, uh, oh, look at that. See, it changed the cruise altitude. It likes to change some of this stuff if you if you make other changes. So, uh, great. Our, our route is still in there. So, uh, let's do that. Let's proceed to file. Now, here's our route. Again, flight rules is, uh, is CIFRA. Got our plane. We've got our departure airport. We've got our route. Uh, got our time and route. Let's put in some, some fuel. Um, uh, and there's a paleo, our destination. Now, if you've listened to opposing bases, you know that you can put in a certain number of characters fairly short in the remarks section. I put in the airport that I was headed to here, um, and I don't know if it helped, but at least it's on there, and it, hopefully it's a little bit easier for them to read. Now, in this case, Amila went on the here, uh, or on the plane, so I don't have to worry about the passenger count, and let's just file. Oh, look at that. Uh, let's just type in my phone number. I'll turn it away so that I'm not putting it on YouTube. And there we go. Now we're filing um, in 10 minutes, which is fine. Uh, if you didn't know, in, you can file all the flight plans you want. You just don't ever activate them mm -hmm. unless you need to. So in this case, uh, it doesn't matter that I file mm -hmm. this. I'm not going to be taking it. They disappear out of the system. All right, we have an exp uh, uh uh, planned route, you can see that there's actually no change there except for they shorten the GPS coordinates. It it does a lot of this kind of like annoying you with, with details sort of thing, but you've got this this filed. Okay, so uh, now that you've got that filed, what happens? Uh, you can call departure while you're on the ground and uh, you can ask them to activate it, activate flight planning, whatever. Tried that several times. I think it only worked one and four times. So. Uh, what I did instead is I got into the air and I, I just called in for it and they bounced me around on a couple of frequencies on my way back actually um, But you know eventually they do you say who you are where you are hi, I need to activate my CIFRA and um, I'll ask you a plane type kind of like minimal flight following kind of ask for it at the same time whether they give it to you or not in the Bravo is questionable but they'll activate it and they'll give you your transponder code. They always give you one. You do not squawk 1200 in the CIFRA. So they'll give you your code, 1234, you type it in, and you know they'll do a position check on you as, as you're used to. And at that point, you're implicitly cleared into the CIFRA. I asked if they weren't very clear with it, just to make sure. So at that point, stay on their frequency. They may bounce you to some others. In the Bravo, they bounce you to a lot. So I think I went through six plus frequencies as I was going through it. But it's good because you're so close to so many other jets and stuff. Now, when you come out the far side of it, so in our case, we were going to exit at Paleo. Uh, once you exit, not a minute before, 
not airport in sight. Once you exit, then you can say that you've exited and you've got the airport in sight. Uh, and they'll tell you, you know, your your CIFRA is canceled. I don't know what the word is they use. Your CIFRA is canceled, um, changed to frequency approved. Um, remain on your on your squawk. They make sure to tell you that. Stay on your squawk code. You don't go back to VFR. Stay, you know, don't go back to 1200. Stay on 1234, whatever it is they assign you. You're going to keep that until you land. And uh, that's it. Now, when you take back off, do it in reverse. Real quick, I'm not going to show it, but Here's what happens if you are flying into an airport inside the CIFRA. You fly, file your plan with your departure as the gate and your destination as the airport. When you call in, it's gonna be kind of the same sort of thing. You can ask for flight following. You need to be in the CIFRA, you get a code. There are certain rules, and you see this in the CIFRA knee board. There's certain rules about if you're doing pattern work at a towered airport and you know those kinds of things. You have different codes you use, but if you're just going in, Go do a stop. Don't do a stop and go. That makes the it makes the codes more complicated. But then, as you're on the ground, you can call and open your CIFRA for the way back. Now, the way out is in reverse of that. Put your departure as the airport that you're at. Put your destination as the gate you're going through, and then call to activate it. Um, that one we were able to get on the ground. That was inside the CIFRA. Um, only one of four legs was inside the CIFRA, and that was when I had the instructor with me, which was really nice. So anyway, there you go. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty much the same as, as, or it's similar to going into a Bravo, which is there's a lot of big kids around, you know. <laughs> uh, don't expect to be vectored for all your traffic, you know. I mean, there's, there's a lot. Um, uh, but, you know, the real key there is stay outside of that freeze, make sure you're following the rules on the Sephra, and you shouldn't have any jets or helicopters come after you. So. That was my experience and yeah, happy to share. Later.